most, you know, hardcore strength coaches and, and therapists and trainers will tell you most athletes are underprepared and underloaded coming back from it. You know, hope is a bad strategy. I'm not involved with anything that, that has to do with hope. I want to make sure I can gauge what we're doing going forward. Our modern strength and conditioning coach should uh, be able to manage, delegate, adapt, have a growth mindset, be effective in communication, have administrative skills, and follow a budget. They should have a degree in exercise, compete as an athlete, and have real experience. We have to be skilled in, in technology and teaching technique, but I want to bring us back to talking about people. The overwhelming majority of associate athletic directors, you know, I mean, they don't know what we do. They don't know what the performance unit does. And I think that's really critical to understand because they're overseeing the reason why we have an athletic department. Every single athlete, you'd think there'd be some pinpoint focus on that. Coach Chip Morton, this is, this is a super big highlight for me. We were able to have him a couple of years ago. Uh, he, uh, we hosted the NSPA conference and he spoke at it. And I know we have a couple members on staff that had a direct line with him and an impact uh, from him. But to be able to feel what you feel in a room when you're with this man, it's, it, there's probably not another person in this world that you'll feel that much love from with, without necessarily knowing personally. And so, uh, I mean, his, his resume goes without saying, I mean, he has over 30 years in the field from professional to, to youth to collegiate. He's worked with um, most recently with the, with the Bengals, but many, many other NFL teams, conference championships, Super Bowls. I mean, it just the man is a legend, but just who he is as a person is, is I'm just so grateful to have him on here and learn from him. So uh, Coach Chip Morton, the floor is yours. There we go. Thank you, Laney, and thank you, uh... Indiana strength staff. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is my first opportunity. Am I on now? Is that, is that on? Tell me if that's on. Okay. Uh, this is my first. So a couple firsts. This is my first time sharing in this form of doing a screen share. So I'm learning, I'm growing today, but um, it's interesting. Thank you for the kind words. And um, you know, coach Bob and coach Andrea really they're iconic coaches and and even better people and so i am thrilled and i'm really humbled um to be a part of this uh it's a really neat format that said you know coach coach bob talked about the high performance model and within that some of the things i picked out he talked about the need for collaboration to make it work the need for communication and humility coach andrea she, we were on before the, before the session and we talked about, and she made the statement, it's still all about coaching and people. And, and as bright as she is and, and as, as much as she does with training and science, what stands out to me, are, even in this, in these 10 minutes are what people say about her and their experiences with her and that she gets, you know, things like she gets the most out of people and uh, her interpersonal skills are amazing. And she talked about creating a culture. So I guess I'm going to, this is a, a perfect segue into what I want to talk about. And, and actually, in all honesty, I, I am between jobs. So I've had a lot of time to consider and you know, reflect on my career and, and what I'm about. And I've had a number of interviews. I'm still involved in some. And throughout the interview process, and I'm going to give you all a different view, on, different lens on things. I'll give you the number I've had. I've had eight formal interviews, hours of formal interviews. And uh, the questions have not been about X's and O's. Everybody has asked me, they all want to know, and I'm, I'm talking professional teams to, to a military opportunities, to a high school, they want to know, will I fit the culture? They want to know about me. So it's funny going into the going into the hiring season. I was prepared for, you know, my programming and talk about where I'm at now. And I had all my files set up. But in essence, it wasn't about X and O's. It was about people. Um, coach Johnny Parker, who is another veteran coach, I think he said it well. He said I he stated once somewhere I coach people, not weights. So we have to have the knowledge. We have to have the science. Uh, we have to be skilled in, in technology and 
teaching technique, but I want to bring us back to talking about people, the people factor. So um, my title is, you can see, if Tom there, you know, it, um, we're going to talk about me as in each one of us evaluating ourselves, you being our athletes, others around us, and we together. And, and note that we are better together. So one of the one of the terms thrown around quite a bit currently in the popular literature and social media is culture and uh you know creating a culture coach hudy uh, hoodie uh talked about that creating a positive culture and i like this definition it's from dr paul white um it just simply it's the aggregate of hundreds of thousands of interactions between individuals including daily communication. So whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, whether it's a formal or informal meeting, whether it's sharing data, the, all those interactions, whether they be positive and building people up or, or, or negative taking away from the organization, that, that's the culture. So it's, it, we, we better, as Coach Andrea said, we better get good at communicating in order to manage people or come alongside people, we better be good at it. Now, if you note at the top of the screen, I said it takes intention. For some people, um, having uh, you know empathy, being able to see people, being able to share uh, honestly, it might be more natural. For others, it might not be your personal makeup. You might be introverted. You might not uh, feel confident in, in certain situations. You might not be confrontational or able to deal with confrontation. So in that case, there is a degree in either, in either case of intention. You have to be intentional about it. So let's start with me, with meeting you. Yeah, there, here's the, this will be the pep talk. Okay, the first is, is finding your calling. And I, and I just rediscovered the word finding your calling. I just rediscovered that very recently in a study. And it's an old, it's an old you know, Reformation word um, and it had a spiritual base to it, and, and that's where I'm coming from as well. But your calling is, what are you called to do? What lights up your heart? What is it that excites you? Um, when you're talking about this profession and the day-to-day, -day, you know, making a day-to-day -day difference with people, your calling is, is what's going to drive you. What is your purpose? The more common term now is, what's your why? Everybody will understand that one. Do you have a vision for what you're doing? So identify what, what lights up your heart, but then also identify your gifts. What am I good at? You know, I talked about intention in the previous slide. Maybe I need to work on my communication skills. Maybe for me, I need to learn to listen more and talk less. Um, but, but what are your gifts? Can you teach? Are you good at teaching? Are you good at caring? Are you good at... Um, serving are you know, what are what are they and then hone them continue to work on them but also identify the areas where maybe i'm not so good for me it's listening so for me listen i've got to be very aware of listening first next you we should always be seeking wisdom and that's with people from people and with people and also certainly knowledge and programming um one of the things that you'll see on this call with this slide of including me we've all been coaching a long time and uh i, I think there is something you know we kid about it and um oh you know coach leo talked about being an old guy well i'm probably an old guy too young at heart but older and chronologically but there is wisdom to be had from people that have been there before um some of the questions with with this uh, the quarantine time a lot of coaches i had young coaches calling me and asking you know what what i've never done this before what should i do or how do we approach this what are some thoughts and we went through the same thing in 2011 in the nfl with the, with the player with the collective bargaining agreement lockout um we didn't see our players until training camp and we we you know we sent home workouts at the time that was in 2011 there wasn't much virtual going on back then so you sent workouts, knowing, not having really any way to find, to really, besides phone calls, to find out whether they were doing it or not. But we'd meet and meet and meet as a staff throughout the spring, and it kept getting pushed back. And then finally, it came down to, we're going to see our players in training camp. 
And so it was Coach Marvin Lewis who actually suggested in a staff meeting that I um, call some of the older strength coaches. Jerry Attaway, who had been with the 49ers for all the Super Bowl years, just he said, call Coach Attaway and see what, what, he, what his thoughts were. And he was a retired coach at the time. And I, coached, I called Coach Johnny Parker as well. And they had great insight on how to handle it, just experiential in, insight. So I was seeking wisdom from, from older, experienced coaches that had gone before me, as well as the, the, the current science from our RD and from, our, from the exercise science community. So it was seeking wisdom, both current knowledge and the cutting edge knowledge, but also talk to people who've been there before. Um, and then finally, in, in, in finding your calling and, and finding your purpose, each day is, here's the pep, pep talk part, each day is, is a new one and it's full of opportunities. So, you know, live each day, learn all you can and, and grow in relationship and knowledge and in your skill set. Um, because life is rich and I say life is rich in that that includes both the hard, the good times and the hard times. Um, richness can be deep emotion either way, but it all makes life better. So experience it. So now here's the, here's the real talk. So I just gave you the pep talk on finding your calling. The real talk is it, it, it's important to, to have a, a proper view of yourself. Um, and we're talking here about humility. Um, certainly don't think of yourself more highly than you are. That's just humility. And, and Coach Aleo talked about having humility in meetings and with athletes and being able to own, own when you're wrong or listen to other people's insight and learn and grow from people. Um, when I was a younger coach, you know, I always called myself an army of one. And I, I tend to have the attitude that if it's, if it's going to get done right, then I need to do it myself. Um, and, my, and my answer to that now is, it really, is that the best that's not the best model. The best model is one of cooperation and communication. And with that, we have to be able to see tenderly our own flaws. Where can I grow? Where am I blind? Do I have any blind spots? Am I missing something? And people will share that with you. Um, you'll see that in your interactions. And oftentimes, if you have a trusted friend or trusted peer, I'll ask, I will ask them, to deliver, you know, share that with me, but do it gently, you know, be gentle with me so I can receive it, but then just owning your flaws. So confident humility is what you're striving for. Confidence in that you know your material, confidence that you've, you've been learning all along, you've put time in, you know the X's and O's, and you know how to teach, you know the cues. Um, the humility though, to deliver that where it's receivable, um, that requires experience, experiences, not, and time as well. Here's where, and this is where, so we talked about, I just talked about me, my introspection. Now we're going to get to your athletes and the people around you. And this is where I always started. And this was, um, this was the prayer of, of one of the great military political leaders of, of the ancient world. Um, it's from the Old Testament, from the Psalms, and it was King, it was, those words were prayed by King David. And if we talk about affirmations for people and, and you know, who they are when you're dealing with your, when you're dealing with people, your athletes or your, or your family or your friends, you, the people you work with, the people you meet at the, at the supermarket, I try to look, look, see them in this light. Um, and this was David's prayer. I praise you because I am uniquely and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. This I know full well. Um, that is my, my affirmation when, I, when I'm feeling down or when I need to be reminded. This is what I go to. And this is a slide, not this exact slide, but I would share this with our rookies when we'd have rookie minicamp at the Bengals. This was one of the first slides when we had our introductory meeting, who we are as a staff and what we're going to do this, this, this year and welcome to the Bengals. This was the first slide I shared. So we started here and it'd be, it, it's amazing in that demographic, how many young men, these were talented. These were all drafted players, free agents. These were rookie hopefuls, first year hopefuls on a professional football team. 
and they had never heard this. They'd never seen, that, heard it spoken to them. And I know it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a faith, it's a faith statement, it's a, it's a scripture statement, um, but I believe it's a truth. And when, when you hear that, and Lainey and Tom and, and Andrea and Bob, this is true about each and every one of us. There's only one of you, all of you in the whole wide world, and you're unique and remarkable. So if you start there in all your relationships, you start there in how you see people, how you treat them, how you coach them, how you teach them, how you correct them, um, that's going to be a powerful place to start. So here's where we go with that. So starting with them being, you know, everyone you deal, everyone you meet, everyone you encounter is unique and remarkable. As a, as a coach, I believe in you, there's a certain amount of devotion that goes on, being devoted to one another in brotherly love. And that's, that's filial love. There are different types of love. So, and that's a whole nother talk. Um, but brotherly love is a fondness and a care for another person that, that grows over time. And it grows because you're in contact with each other. So be devoted. It's, it's self-sacrifice. Uh, the, the, the current term would be servant leader. That's the, that's the hot term right now. But it just means being humble and meeting the needs of other people. So you're pouring in. As a coach, you're pouring in knowledge, you're pouring in, you're exhorting, you're encouraging, you're correcting, um, you're listening, you're coming alongside and, and making them better. With that, you're, you're pouring in and you're also trying to draw out the best. One of the, one of the mottos or one of the motivating factors in the NFL, for, and for most, I'd say for all athletes, is can you make me better? That's what athletes oftentimes want to know. Can you make me better? And if you can, I'll listen. So you're always trying, you're pouring in and you're drawing out and just keep in mind, and this is another, another uh, hashtag right now, we're training humans. And I, it's, when I first heard someone mention that recently on Instagram, I, I was, I chuckled, I thought that's a great, that's a great thought and a great theme. Now it'll be overdone, but it's sad that we had to be reminded, Hey, we're, you know, you're training people. Um, and that goes back to what, what, what Andrea said, get the most out of people. And what Coach Bob said about being humble and what Coach Johnny Parker said, I train people, not weights. So I guess it's, it's good to remember that. There are people with, with opinions, with joys, with fears, with insecurities, with things that light them up. Um, and it's seeing them and reaching them and pouring in um, Let's get to that. We shouldn't really have to say that. And finally, we talked about ourselves, introspection. We talked about the people around you, the you, others. So together, uh, what, what you're looking for is a spirit of cooperation. And our, uh, when I coached for the Carolina Panthers in the, in the 90s, Coach Don Bro always talked about the spirit of cooperation. And you could also, in more modern terms, call it collaboration and realizing that all, everyone, everyone in the room, everyone in your facility, everyone on your building, they're all unique and remarkable. And it brings a, there's a diversity there that brings great beauty because we're all different. We all have different gifts, but together we contribute to parts of the whole. We, we all know we have areas where we can grow and get better in. Um, some of the people around you might be strong in that area. They may provide that, that they may fill that gap there and make the whole even greater. So just remembering people's gifting, keeping it, seeing them with that lens. Um, and always, always with your athletes and staff, it's always gonna be collaboration, which is gonna take, which is gonna require humility as well. And finally, we thrive, note that we thrive, we all thrive in a relationship. We were built for a relationship. Um, a famous study, the longest longitudinal, I, I talk about it a lot, the Grant study at Harvard University was started in 1938. And they started, they studied undergraduates at Harvard University. And it was, it's still going on to this day. And they've had a number of directors that run the study. But the, the question was, what makes people flourish? What is it that makes people thrive? And they followed Starting 1938, the sophomore class, they followed them throughout the lifetime and continue to follow to this day. And they, were, they, they wondered, was it professional 
success? Was it money? Was it um, degrees, you know, academic degrees? Was it uh, the number of children they had or family success or, or happy marriage? What was it that caused people to flourish? That ma what makes us come alive and thrive? And after the statement a few years ago from one of the directors was, you know, 75 years and $40 million later into the grants, into the Harvard study, what makes people thrive is love. A caring, caring, relate, having caring relationships in life. That was the one common thing. It wasn't title, it wasn't salary, it wasn't success in business or in coaching. It was the relationships. And I think that it's, it's imperative like Andrea said, to continue to stay on the cutting edge. And she, I mean, I, I'm going to listen to her talk again. Um, and I may have to call her on that because she's way ahead of the curve on things. And Coach Bob, who's a, an, exper an older experienced coach who is really running uh, in, in management, in high performance management, taking experiential, experienced, an experienced hand and applying it to a, a modern concept and making it work. So um those relationships keep that in mind learn all you can but also strive to pour into others and see others as unique and wonderful um if you start there everything else will go that much better so um i think i went a little long but i appreciate you listening so thank you coach is absolutely incredible um Coach Moore, and I'll tell you the, the love, the passion, um, the care that comes out of that talk uh, is truly humbling. And, and you know, across the board, uh, you, you all, I mean, this was, this was more than I thought. My hand is on fire from all of the notes that I'm taking. So huge uh, virtual round of applause across the board because that was absolutely incredible. A um, couple uh, reminders. Uh, all these talks, they will be on indianastrength.com. Um, as always, Coach Virtue is going to be putting out uh, some of the highlight reels of this. That's always exciting. Uh, next week, we got a special week that's going to be devoted to intern programming. So we're going to have Mary Kay and Adam Fight from uh, Springfield College. We're going to have Nick Higgins and Becky Bonaventura. Uh, Nick from Washington, Becky from Rutgers, collaborating on how they're working with um, that, their, their intern program. And then Laney, Coach Laney Deppy and myself, are going to talk a little bit about what we're doing at Indiana Strength. So um, I encourage you, if you're not signed up or not subscribed yet, please go to Indiana Strength, subscribe. And until next week, get out, make today better than yesterday. Keep on living. Thank you again for everybody and have a great day. Thank you. All right.